While viewing a total eclipse of the Sun, do not look directly at the Sun except during totality. Looking directly at the eclipse while part of the Sun is visible will damage your eyes. Now, special glasses are one safe way to view a solar eclipse, but indirect viewers are the best and safest way to view an eclipse. In this video, I will show you how to construct three indirect viewers, a telescope solar projector, a pinhole solar projector, and binocular solar projector. A telescope solar projector involves lining up a telescope so as to use it to project an image of the sun onto a backdrop. If you're using a straight telescope, you also need a shade of some sort to keep excess light from getting around the image. If your telescope isn't bent in it with a mirror, you do not need the shade because you can turn the eyepiece in whatever direction necessary to get the best solar image. Now you can buy these at a store, but you can also make them yourself. To do so, you'll need a piece of cardboard, some white paper, some tape, and a wire hanger. In making a telescope solar projector, you take the, take the cardboard and a sheet of paper and cut out a portion of it that you will use as your, proje as your projection surface. line telescope, you can use the other ha half as a shade by cutting a, a, a hole in it the size of your telescope. and then secure it with tape. Any tape will do, but duct tape has the advantages, advantage of being the best. need to make two small slips unfortunately tape sticking together is kind of an occupational hazard it is tape after all Then after that, then after that, what you do is, then after that, you want to take a coat hanger and unwind it. Shape that will fit on the, that will fit your bend it to fit your screen. Careful because you can cut yourself. You can cut yourself at this stage. The 
then you take some more tape. And tape your screen to screen to the water. This not only gives it red rigidity, more this only makes this not only makes it more rigid, but it but it gives it but it gives it a mount. You can put it you can put you can put it on. On, on the back, as that will not only secure it better to the to the frame, but it also obscure as little of the su surface as possible. And one last little bit, even though it doesn't do a whole lot for the for holding it on. And you got your wire frame. And you have your screen. You also want to break off by moving it as much of the some of the excess part of the metal of the hanger. Just moving it back and forth is enough to weaken it. But you want it about maybe an arm's length for Here's a picture of the setup that I made. You can see the mount just off to the side of the eyepiece. Unfortunately, due to the difficulty in aiming the telescope at the sun and weather, I was unable to actually get a picture of the image. That is why I do not recommend using a telescope solar projector for viewing an eclipse. While you can get a very good image, it is hard to aim the telescope at the sun and keep it aimed at the sun. It's a good option if you have a star tracker on your telescope. But for one that requires manual adjustment, it is not a good idea. A pinhole solar projector is the easiest and most inexpensive viewing device to make. This is one of the reasons why it is so popular. Making a, a pinhole solar projector simply requires a box. We will be using a box from printer paper, some paper, some aluminum foil, and some tape. We will be using duct tape. You do not have to actually buy a whole box of printer paper to get one of these boxes. Most businesses throw them out on a regular basis. If they had one available, they'd probably just give it to you. To make a pinhole projector, you take a box. In this case, it's from 
copy paper or printer paper. To make a pinhole projector, you simply take a box, one made for printer paper across To make a pinhole projector, you take a box, one from either copy or paper or printer paper, works good, and you cut a slit, down it. You want to tear up the head inside there as much as possible. Then once you have the once you have the split, you, you take a piece. Once you have the split cut, you take a piece of aluminum foil. This has to be very big. Want to smooth it out? Throw the split. You then take some tape. That tape works very good. And use it to secure the foil to the box. Once you have the foil in place, you, you take a pen, and poke a hole through it. I'll make sure you get a good round hole. You then take some paper and secure it in the box. And that's what you're going to project the image on.
Point at a light source, and if you get the right image, in this case I'm getting three spots of light, which I should be since I have three overhead bulbs. Here's a picture of our finished pinhole solar projector. It's really quite simple and easy to use. Here is a picture of our pinhole solar projector from the top. Here is an image of the sun through this projector. Here's an even better image of the sun through this pinhole projector. It helps to test them out on a cloudy day so that you can see clouds in the image letting you know that you got the projector working right. Here's one final image from our pinhole solar projector. This is probably the one you're most likely going to be making. The final viewer in this tutorial is a binocular solar projector. Now while I use a real set of binoculars in this tutorial, you can use a toy set or even a toy telescope if they actually have lenses and work to a reasonable degree and can be focused. We first start with the same basic components and instructions for building a pinhole solar projector, although you do not need the aluminum foil. Instead of a pinhole, you cut a hole large enough to accommodate the lens of your binoculars and a slit on the top of the box to accommodate the other half of the binocular set. On the inside of the box, you need to include some reinforcement behind the lens hole in a place where the binoculars can be supported. This can be done with a small box. I also packed the lens hole with duct tape to produce a snug fit with the binoculars. Next you mount the binoculars with one lens in the lens hole and the other lens on the slit at the top of the box. You then drape the strap through the slit over the top of the box. This way the strap can be used to help support the binoculars and make fine adjustments if needed. Next you place the lid on, but do not tape it because you may need to remove it to focus the binoculars. Here is the top of the projector showing the binocular lens and strap
Here is an image of the sun through the binocular solar projector. See how it is much bigger and clearer than that of the pinhole projector. This is an even better image of the sun through this projector. Here's an image of the sun where you can actually see clouds going across it, showing that this is not just a spot of light, but an actual image of the sun. If you have a set of binoculars, this is the one I recommend you actually use for viewing a total eclipse of the sun. If not, then I recommend the pinhole projector. This concludes this tutorial. Feel free to refer to it as you prepare for the Great American Eclipse on August 21st, 2017. Make sure you view this eclipse safely.